If you spend any time making music at home, or in a studio, you'll know the importance of gearing up with the best studio monitors you can afford. Studio monitor speakers are essentially designed to reveal a true picture of the audio you're creating. And in today's video, we will break down the top 5 best budget studio monitor in 2021 you can buy. Roll down to the link in the description box below to know more information and latest price update. Subscribe the channel and like the video if it helped you out in any ways, then hit the bell icon for getting notification when we upload the new video. Starting up our list with the number 5, we have the KRK Rocket 5G4. The KRK Rocket series has been a staple in countless studios around the world. And the Rocket 5, now on its fourth gen version, loses the round, egg like curves of its predecessors in favor of a more traditional enclosure with rounded corners. It sports a 5 inches Kevlar woofer and 1 inch Kevlar dome tweeter. Tweaking controls are done on an app via Bluetooth, for better adjustments without leaving the sweet spot. It also includes ISO foam pads for decoupling from surfaces. The speakers deliver fantastic sound quality in a compact package design of 11.22 by 7.48 by 9.49 and weight only 10.69 pounds, make it an idea for a small room. While earlier Rocket generations were criticized for having a bloated low frequency range, the Rocket 5G4 has refined their sound signature and tightens it up with a front firing port. Many users love the flat but extended response despite being on the smaller scale of studio monitors. EDM producers were happy to still have the low frequency extension with a more balanced midrange, leading to better mix translation. And for the cons, the digital controls turned off some users for being gimmicky. Overall, the Rocket 5G4 has made converts of former doubters of the Rocket line. With its new, more balanced sound signature and more serious aesthetic, the KRK Rocket 5G4 earns its place as a serious contender at this price point. At number 4, we have the JBL 305 PMK2. JBL takes a spot in this list with the second iteration of the 305, carrying over its best features while mixing in improvements that include improved transient response and linearity, new boundary EQ controls to reduce environment-induced low-frequency anomalies, and improved enclosure material, 15mm MDF. Its feature with dual 41 watts Class D amplifiers, which power the 5-inch low-frequency woofer and woven composite 1-inch Neo Denim tweeter. The combined output of the woofer and tweeter offer a frequency response of 49 Hz to 20 kHz with a peak of 108 dB. While the dimensions 11.75 by 7.3 by 9.1 and weight just only 10.43 pounds. The JBL MK2 strong point is its sound quality, which many consider as incredible when considering its price point. Many users specifically mention its highs and midrange to be very lifelike, and they report that it helped them hear nuances that they were not able to with their old monitors. The speaker's build quality also gets a lot of thumbs up. And for the cons, some users complain that the low end is lacking, but given its small 5 inches woofer, this is to be expected. There are also a few who note that it distorts when pushed hard, but this is more of a physical limitation than a problem. Overall, if you're looking for a great value studio monitor that performs well even in untreated rooms, the 305 PMK2 is a great choice. Low end may be lacking but in rooms with less than stellar acoustics, a conservative low frequency output prevents unrealistic low frequency projection. At the number 3, we have the Yamaha HS7. Yamaha continues to be the go-to brand for studio monitors in the entry to the mid-tier market. Yamaha monitors are easy to spot, with the distinct white-colored cone woofers, an element carried over from their legendary NS10 speaker. Yamaha's signature sound is a flat low midrange, tight low frequencies, and a brutally revealing upper midrange spike that makes EQ mistakes painfully obvious. It has a 6.7 woofer paired with a 1-inch dome tweeter mounted on vibration damping material to eliminate unwanted resonance for distortion and coloration-free sound. Another notable feature is the use of bigger magnets and matching advanced magnetic circuit design. Finally, the HS7 comes with room and high trim switches for adjusting the sound to the acoustics of your listening area. The Yamaha HS7 is well received for its flat response, which many describe as very natural sounding. The highs and mids are described as very clear and transparent, while the low end is just right for most mixing scenarios. There's also quite a lot of rave about its solid build, including the feel of the knobs. 
and for the cons, there are no notable concerns about the sound, but one user was annoyed by the overly bright LED light. Overall, the HS7 bridges the gap between their two models, the HS5 and the HS8. If you feel that the HS5 is a bit lacking on the low frequencies but don't want to get a sub, the HS7 is a good pick as long as your room is treated enough to dampen resonance. On the number 2, we have the PreSonus Scepter S6. Just one look at the Scepter S6 and you'll notice its standout coaxial design, where the 1-inch tweeter is positioned front and center of the 6.5 woofer. Compared to traditional two-way speakers where the two are separated, this back-to-back -back configuration allows for a more balanced dispersion. To better use this design, PreSonus equipped the Scepter S6 with a dual-core DSP that handles crossover frequency adjustments. The 180W Class D amplifier features an internal heat sink for longevity and performance. Controls include level adjustment knob and pre-programmed acoustic tuning at buttons that let you customize the resulting sound to match the room that you are using it in. Experts and users alike have mostly great things to say about the Scepter S6, with specific emphasis on its mid-range clarity and overall sound quality. Even those who were skeptical of the coaxial design report that, it improved their monitoring and mixing experience. The linear throw of the speakers helped mixers feel a sense of depth from the stereo image, unlike other designs they tried. And for the cons, there are a few who wanted knobs instead of buttons for the acoustic tuning controls. Some experts noticed subtle smearing in the lower frequencies because of its front ported design. Overall, the Scepter S6 is truly unconventional with its design philosophy. The result is a clear midrange, large sweet spot, and stunning stereo separation and depth. Get it if you tend to mix music with dense layers. If you need low frequency accuracy, the design may not be to your liking. The last product on our list is the Avantone Pro Active Mix Cube. The Avantone Mix Cube is a mini reference monitor influenced by the Auratone 5C monitor speakers. The Auratone 5C has been around since the 70s, and was a passive design while the Avantone Mix Cube is a modern powered speaker. The Mix Cube emphasizes the midrange, mimicking the sound of basic sound systems like those found in televisions, mobile phones, car stereos, Bluetooth players, laptops, and more. Monitoring on these so-called grot boxes helps give you an additional reference point with regards to hearing your mix on consumer electronics. It sports a single 5.25 woofer and produces sound without a tweeter, much like how most budget speakers are set up. There are no fancy controls either, so all you have to do is plug in, get it in position, and listen to your mix. Avantone assures that each unit is properly shielded, so you can use it beside computers without worrying about interference. Finally, this speaker system comes in a 6.5 cube MDF cabinet that does not require much space and it comes in black or cream color. Most users consider the Mix Cube as the ideal monitor for mono mixing, allowing you to audition tracks as you would with real world media players. Many users felt that it makes for easier mixing of vocals, guitars, and other instruments that sit within the middle frequencies. And for the cons, because of its mid heavy sound, mixing with the Avantone Pro won't have a full sound. But that's the point. There are a few who commented on the power supply being too bulky for the size of the unit, as the speaker itself is compact and light. Overall, it is generally not recommended by the recording community to mix only on small speakers, like the old Auratone 5C. Thankfully, Avantone has tweaked the mix cube to be more versatile than its ancestor with a bit more extension in the lows and highs, making it a good emergency speaker set for on-the-go mixing aside from its intended purpose as a supplementary monitoring system. Get it if you already have bigger speakers at home or have fly-in mixing sessions with studios that have unfamiliar speakers. Avoid it if you're buying your first pair of monitors.